Welcome back to day two of the 2021 Texas Workforce Commission Virtual Forum. Enjoy your session, and remember, complete the survey for each session that you attend. These surveys will be sent to you via email at the end of each session. Hello again, and welcome to breakout session labor market data in a changing economic climate. Your presenters are William Lutz and Nancy Moore. You're part of a larger audience today. All attendees will be in listen only mode throughout the session. And please note that this session is being recorded. There are moderators and a WebEx producer in the background to assist with any issues that may arise during your session. Please direct your attention to the very bottom of your screen to the far right. You'll see two buttons, participants and chat, along with three dots. If you click on the three dots, it will open to the multimedia viewer and the Q&A. By clicking on the multimedia viewer, the closed captioning option will open for you. Please also notice various sections on the right side of your screen, participants, chat, and Q&A. The participants section on the right side of your screen has a small megaphone found at the bottom, and by simply selecting the megaphone, you're able to give reactions to this session's presentation. The chat feature is inoperable for all attendees during today's session. The Q&A section will be used for any questions or comments during the session. You're encouraged to place any questions or comments that you would like to have addressed in the Q&A section. Those questions will be addressed at the end of the presentation. For your viewing pleasure, you as an attendee have control over which screen view is displayed on your computer or device. This is provided through the layout button. The layout button appears in the top right of your screen, or it may also appear just outside the area where you see the presenters displayed. By selecting the layout button, you can change the view to suit your personal preference. If you don't see the layout button on your screen, simply left click close to the panelist list and the layout button should appear. If you experience technical difficulty at any time during this WebEx event, please submit your technical issue in the Q&A panel so that assistance can be provided. And a reminder, there will be a survey at the end of the session. We use your surveys to assist with future events, so please take time to complete the survey because your input is valuable. With that being said, we invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy your session with William Lutz and Nancy Moore. Hello, I'm William Lutz. I'm one of our economists here at Labor Market and Career Information. We work with the Bureau of Labor Statistics to disseminate and help compile all of the data about the tell that talks about employment and wages and we produce a variety of educational publications that our workforce boards use and also are used a lot in our schools uh, my co-worker nancy moore one of our other economists is also joining us here today we have put some data together for you to talk about the state of the economy and how COVID has affected the texas economy but the main point of this presentation is to be a how-to presentation. We want you to be able to work with our data to help you understand the economy in your area and to help you find your local situation to help all of the people we serve. So with that, I'm gonna start with roughly about a 40 minute presentation that contains both data and an explanation of the web tools and which of the data sets we have best helps explain the effect of COVID on the economy. Once we get done with the video and the PowerPoint, uh, Nancy and I will both be available at the end of the presentation and we've left some time available to answer your questions. LMCI is also always available uh, for you and we have our contact information at the end of our presentation. Feel free to contact us with any questions even if you don't think of them during the presentation because we're here to help you understand the economy better and to make the maximum use of the data that we produce. I really thank you for your interest in our topic, and I hope our presentation will be informative and helpful to you as in your work. Thank you, and enjoy the, the recorded presentation, and I'll be back for the Q&A.
Hello, thank you for joining this presentation and for this opportunity to talk about labor market data. My name is Nancy Moore and I currently work in the labor market and career information department or LMCI for short of the external relations division. Members in my section primarily work on data related to Texas labor statistics, but my section also works on the dissemination of data and we create reports associated with different programs such as local area unemployment statistics, current employment statistics, projections, occupational employment statistics. Today, Will Lutz and I will present to you a current Texas economic overview, discuss what data is most helpful when the economic climate is changing so rapidly, and where to find those resources. So our goal today is to highlight timely labor market data that you might use to identify key economic changes in your region. So we'll work to answer these questions. How is the Texas economy doing? And what data sets measure the impact of COVID-19? Are there industry and regional differences? And where can we find this data? Which program is best to use? The answer to those questions will be in the context of information found at our website called TexasLMI.com. This resource is updated regularly based on predetermined release dates, and those release dates are published here as well. So let's begin with an overview of the Texas economy using current employment statistics and local area unemployment statistics. That is, we'll look at the unemployment rate and industrial employment numbers. We begin with a look at employment statistics based on where people work through the current employment statistics program. We call that CES for short. And it counts the number of employed at a site and is reported by the business owner. So this is a measure of industry employment among metropolitan regions. And we sometimes refer to it as non-agricultural or non-farm employment. So this graph depicts job growth statewide over the year. Employment growth among Texas industries has been strong over most of the last 10 years. And notice it's above 2%, except for some time around 2015 to 2017. And up to April 2020, when it plummets into negative territory and then it rebounds. So let's take a moment to consider what this graph is saying. Texas has experienced consistent growth from May 2010 until March 2020. Then in April, employment declined 8.9% over the year. And then the graph takes sort of a checkmark shape indicating monthly improvement from April. The checkmark shape represents 10 months of consistent improvement and a slip from that improvement in the recent February data. From this, we can say that the point of, from the point of decline, Texas employment has improved, but it's not back to where it was in March. We're still below where we were one year ago. And so as you can see from this graph, uh, over the past 10 years, what has happened is significant, but the improvement is happening as well. among the subgroups in non-farm employment is quite varied and we can see how individualized each industry group is by comparing over the year change in each industry. So this table shows us some of the variety of employment um, that we'll see that uh, totals to the non-farm employment. So which industries are doing well? As we look at how employment has changed over the year, we can also consider progress from month to month. So as indicated in the table under percent change over the year, annual change ranges from a decline of 23.7% of growth to 20, a decline of 23.7% to growth of 0.1%. So trade, transportation, and utilities became the first to achieve positive annual growth of 0.1% since April. And while the largest losses are seen in mining and logging at 23.7% decline and leisure and hospitality with a 14.5% decline, there have been improvements within these industrial groups since April. In February, mining and logging 
continued to show signs of recovery with five consecutive months of growth. And Leisure and Hospitality has added back over 350,000 jobs since April. So as you see that the industries are in different places as far as recovery, um, they also are showing progress across the months. To look at the unemployment rate over 10 years. The unemployment rate is a value estimated by the local area unemployment statistics program or LAUS for short and this data is based on where people live with inputs from household survey data. Beginning in February of 2011 the unemployment rate graph starts at roughly 8% in 2010 and it steadily declines and then shoots up in the spring of 2020 due to the shutdowns caused by a coronavirus pandemic. It then declines a bit, and though it's not quite back to where it was. Um, if we look into this data series a bit closer, we'll find that this graph is showing us the lowest values and the highest values since 1976. And those occurred in May and June of 2019, when we had our lowest value of 3.4%. And in April of 2020, when we had our highest value, at 13.5% unemployment rate. And so we see from this graph in recent months that also the labor market is somewhat volatile. And we wanna keep in mind that the unemployment rate is a ratio of the portion of the civilian labor force that's currently seeking work. So let's take a look at the civilian labor force as, uh, as it stands today. So the civilian labor force is defined as the portion of of the civilian population above the age of 16 years that either has a job or is actively seeking a job. And Laos data represents people who live within the statistical region based on what is called household survey data. So the components of the civilian labor force are employment and unemployment. So here in this table in February, the Texas civilian labor force was down compared to January and compared to February of last year and the number of unemployed increased from the previous month and from the previous year. These values resulted in a slight change in the unemployment rate over the month and an increase of 3.2% over the year. When measuring differences among data sets, we have some options for analysis, but we need to ensure there's consistency. So we wanna consider um, what some of those options are. Are we measuring seasonally adjusted or actual data? Are we measuring from month to month or from year to year? Um, we want to consider subsector level changes. And then we have an option of, of indexing, uh, using an index to measure to pre pandemic levels. So you might have noticed the term seasonally adjusted in the previous slide. And later we will see slides that are actual or not seasonally adjusted. But generally, seasonal adjustment is a statistical technique that attempts to measure and remove the influence of seasonal patterns, sometimes called smoothing the data. When the process is not applied, we call that data not seasonally adjusted. It's generally appropriate to measure seasonally adjusted data over consecutive months of data as in a time series and then not seasonally adjusted data changes are measured more appropriately just to the previous month or the previous year. The key is to be consistent when you're comparing data. Month to month and over the year changes can be applied to subsector regions as well. So um, that tells you what some of the strengths and weaknesses are of employment within the industry. When we move forward though, comparing employment levels using time periods related to the shutdown won't really allow for a normal perspective of regaining levels of growth and moving forward out of that period of decline. So for this reason, an index might give more insight on economic recovery. In other words, one could also compare data the last month of that continuous growth cycle. Um, in the CES data, you could compare that data to February 2020. And so I'll show you an example of that in the next slide. Just how far is non-farm employment from its most recent period of growth? Most recent period of growth was February 2020. 
So this becomes the anchor point for the comparison base. And the line graph measures the percent change of employment from February each month. The column measurements represent over the year change um, measured you know, in that same month, each um, measured to the previous year of the same month, um, each month. And so this kind of shows that the index value is very similar to the over the year change then the index will carry forward. So this graph shows that as February, as of February 2021, total non-farm growth continued to decline over the year and was below employment values of 2020. The index value offers that non-farm employment has been within 5% of pre-COVID employment for three consecutive months. Going forward, these same data measuring tools are used to explore geographical regions and industry sectors. So what are the regional statistics of the civilian labor force? Based on this table, you may notice that four metro areas account for roughly 70% of the state's labor force. So the size of the civilian labor force in each of these metropolitan areas is near that of February 2020, with Houston 3.3% below pre-COVID level and Austin, Dallas, and San Antonio areas within 1% of pre-COVID level. The workforce recovery is happening at different rates around the state, and these MSAs will serve as major indicators as they hold the majority of the civilian labor force in the state. What is the unemployment rate among these larger MSAs? The unemployment rate varies among these four metros in February, ranging from 5.6% in Austin to 8.3% in the Houston area. This gives some perspective of unemployment rates in concentrated areas across the state. And though these metros represent 70% of the state's labor force, that isn't to say that the remaining 30% of the state's labor force would be more difficult to employ. Here, we'd like to see how other uh, metro areas compare. How do unemployment rates compare across all 25 MSAs? Here's a listing of Texas MSAs that had the lowest unemployment rates in February. Notice in February, Austin was the only largest metro included in the rank among the lowest in the state. There are 25 metropolitan statistical areas in Texas. So these are defined by the U.S. Census Bureau. An MSA is an urbanized area by county or counties or group of counties um, of at least 50,000 or more in population. And employment gives a measure of what the local population is experiencing in unemployment. And local area unemployment statistics are even measured at county and city level. These statistics help to understand the need that, indiv that individuals have for more employment opportunities. So how is the CES non-farm employment doing in those four larger MSAs? While Texas declined 4.6% in employment over the year, these areas declined at rates ranging from 3 to 7.3%. The strengths and weaknesses within each region can be viewed within its industry profile, and there will be more information on regional industry profiles in a moment. Other than regional perspective, we can also measure change among statewide industry. For example, trade transportation and utilities as measured in over the year growth and the linear measure of change from February 2020 Industry sectors can be measured in the same way that Texas non-farm employment was measured. Trade, transportation, and utilities was the first industry super sector to show growth over the year as of February 2021. This industry added 14,800 jobs over the month in February 2020 as every sector increased in employment. It consists of wholesale trade, retail trade, transportation and warehousing, and utilities. And despite the effects of the pandemic on job loss, employment in the transportation, warehousing, and utilities subsector is 
expanded year over year for 128 consecutive months. So when we look at these industries individually, we can find um, the variety even across industries within the across regions within the industry. Again, there are regional variations of employment in trade, transportation, and utilities, with Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington showing the highest gains for employment in that state. Despite recent losses, professional and business services employment has also been strong at the state level with a wide variation, even among the top five MSA regions. Just as each region is progressing uniquely, each industry sector is as well. Professional and business services, an industry with employment of 1.8 million across the state, declined initially by roughly 100,000 in April 2020, followed by nine months of employment gains and then a slight decline in February. The leisure and hospitality industry reported employment of 1.2 million across the state in February, and it's still over 200,000 below February employment for the same period last year. Industry subsectors in leisure and hospitality are arts and entertainment and recreation and accommodation and food services, which represents the majority of employment reported within the super sector. So how is employment among industry groups across regions? Here is variation across the four largest metros within healthcare and social assistance, a subsector of education and health services. Healthcare and social assistance establishments provide a wide range of care delivered by trained professionals. As the needs for medical care and social assistance such as child daycare services and vocational rehab rehabilitation services have varied, so has employment across the regions. So continue to, continuing to look at this industry shows that even regions that comparably show low unemployment rates have industry sectors that have not regained to hopeful employment levels. So with that, I'll restate that exploring the industry groups of non-farm employment offers a picture of the unique regional economic characteristics that are happening during this recovery time. So now I'll transition over to Will Lutz, who will offer some helpful advice on how you can retrieve this type of data for your specific needs. And I'll stop sharing and transition over to Will. Thank you very much, Nancy. It's really good to be here. as. Uh, Nancy mentioned earlier, one thing we want to emphasize while we get to appear in front of you and we're very glad to be here, we have a whole team of people at LMCI that is working to help you understand your local labor market. So please reach out to us and I want to give credit to a lot of my coworkers at LMCI who helped us put this presentation together. Now what I'm going to try to do, Nancy gave you a real good overview and I'm William Lutz, I'm one of our economists here. And I am going to talk about where you can find this data and how you can customize it for your region. Because one thing that I hope came across in the prior presentation and the prior part of this presentation is that the current Texas economy is very volatile, both by regions and within an industry in a region. So just because an industry is doing real well in one part of the state, uh, they've been recovering at different rates all over the state. So it's really important to know what's going on in your area to give the best possible advice to the people that we serve. So your source for all of our data, as we've mentioned before, is TexasLMI.com. Some of you may have been used to Tracer, which is uh, our prior site. This is the upgrade. Uh, we've had it for a few years. Um, and it, uh, Tracer is a, was our prior site. We've had this one oh, for a few years now. It has some special features that the prior site did not have. The first is that LMCI data, all of our data is posted at texaslmi.com. 
um, as soon as it's released. So at 9 a.m. on a release Friday, you can go to TexasLMI.com and it's all there. The other thing about this data is it is exported to Excel. You can export anything you see on the screen or almost anything to an Excel spreadsheet so you can work with it. We've also worked really hard to make it accessible. So we have some advanced accessibility features on here that our prior site didn't have. You can get our publication schedules so you know when the data is coming out. And we realize we put some bells and whistles on the site. So we have some help videos under each of our data sets that can tell you exactly how to access the data sets. They're short and we have a lot of help features on the site. So we've really worked hard when we unveiled this a couple years ago or so to make this a lot more user friendly for you. Uh, we encourage you to use it and, and please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. We are definitely here to help you uh, get the data you need to help all of the folks in our workforce and our economy. Now let's talk about, um, now let's talk a little bit about um, our, the different data sets that we have and what you can use them for and how you can take a lot of the data that we have on TexasLMI.com and use that data to understand your economy. Um, the first program that we've talked a lot about is current employment statistics. And it contains survey data, as was mentioned earlier, gathered from employers uh, on the level of employment, the number of jobs by industry. Uh, it is monthly data, so it includes data since COVID, and that's really key. Uh, the data you've seen in our presentation is February data, but since we put this together, we've released March data. Uh, so the data that you're looking at is the data from our February release, uh, but we do release it every month, and the schedule, as I mentioned earlier, is on the, on the website. The level of detail is going to vary by region. So for some of our larger regions, you have more of a sample. And therefore, you're going to have a lot more detailed industry data in the larger metropolitan areas and statewide. So we will we have basic data available in every metropolitan area in Texas. But how detailed we go depends on the size of the metropolitan area. But if you need that deeper data, you can also look statewide and at least gives you a little bit of an idea. But as I mentioned in the post-COVID world, Sometimes the same industry will be doing very well and recovering very quickly in one region and much more slowly in another. So the more regional data you can get, the better. So CES is probably one of your best sources for understanding how is COVID affecting my economy in my area. Um, and now let's talk a little bit about some of the limitations of CES as well as its advantages. Okay, advantage to CES, as I mentioned earlier, is it's monthly. The other advantage to it is it is a time series. Um, so if there's new information available or if they find something uh, further back that needs to be corrected, they'll go back and correct the entire time series. So you can compare, you can put together those line graphs that we showed you, and that's a legitimate thing to do. Um, you can compare past months in CES with the current month. And it includes some seasonally adjusted data because there are some uh, employment patterns in some industries that are very seasonal. So, you know, timeliness and the seasonal adjusted time series factors are all very powerful advantages to see. Yes, some of the limitations, you're dealing with industry data. And I know a lot of times we're advising people on going into occupations. Uh, industry data, we're able to collect it much more quickly and so it is an industry data. Uh, the other thing is it only lives in metropolitan areas. Uh, so we do not have rural CES data other than the statewide numbers. And in our smaller metro areas, it is fairly general data. So that is basically the idea behind the CES program. The quarterly census of employment and wages is another data program that provides industry data. And if you're in an area where CES uh, doesn't exist, such as an area that's non-metropolitan, um, QCEW can help you. It's derived from tax records. So we take the tax records that employers send us, we take some surveys to supplement it, apportion it correctly to the counties, and then it's published. The, it, it is very detailed. So you can get very, very detailed industry data out of the QCEW program. And in rural Texas, it may be all you have. 
Uh, the big advantage of QCEW is the level of detail and that uh, QCEW exists in every single county. So you actually get county specific rather than metropolitan area specific data out of the QCEW program. Now here's some of the limitations. The limitation of it, of course, is it takes us a while to put this data together because of the methods that are used to collect it. There's a significant time lag to release. The most recent data we've released as of the taping of this presentation is third quarter of 2020. We're getting ready to release fourth quarter in a few weeks. It's not seasonally adjusted. Uh, so if you're looking at past years, you wanna make sure you're using the same quarter so it's apples to apples. They do not make seasonal adjustments. And a lot of times when there are code changes associated, you know, when they have to go and make corrections to the data, they'll apply it prospectively. They'll apply it moving forward. Whereas with our time series programs, they'll often go all the way back. Um, so there are some limitations to the QCW program, but it also gives you a great level of detail. Uh, and especially once that fourth quarter comes out in May, uh, I, that is a very powerful data set, especially for the rural areas. So I wanted to commend QCW to you. Local area unemployment statistics, uh, again, it's monthly data. So it does give us a little bit of a window as to what's going on with COVID and how COVID has affected our economy. The geography is very detailed. It's the most detailed of any of our labor market programs. It's the only uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics program that TWC is involved with that'll give you city level data for larger cities. Um, we have Laos data in every county in Texas. So it, one thing it is really good for is seeing regional COVID impacts. So if you're looking at, um, you know, in terms of the effect of COVID on your economy. So if you're in a workforce region that has a lot of counties in it, it can tell you which counties have higher unemployment or higher employment than others. Just remember that local unemployment area unemployment statistics are based on residents, where a person lives, rather than for those who are employed, the occupation, the location of their job. Um, and the, the uh, one limitation to our Laos program, though, is it doesn't tell you anything about industry or occupation. It tells you who is working, and it gives you it tells you how many people are working and how many people are unemployed and in what residential geography. That's what Laos tells you. So all of those, each of those programs gives you a slightly different snapshot. It's like looking at the same uh, a work of art, but you might be looking at it, uh, looking for something different or looking at it in a different way. It's the same picture, it's the same work of art, the same painting, but you're looking for something different with each of these programs. Help Wanted Online is another resource that a lot of people in the workforce system have access to. Um, it gives you a little bit of an idea about um, what jobs are out there, but just remember, it's a subset. Not all jobs are advertised. There are many good jobs that are not advertised. But if a business is so concerned about their labor situation that they're willing to pay to take out an ad, to encourage people to apply for a position, that certainly tells you they have a need. And the advantage of Help Wanted Online, it is not government data, it is data provided by a private vendor. Um, for a lot of reasons, they're able to provide very detailed geography and they're able to provide some industry and occupation information. So Help Wanted Online, if you have access to it, can be a useful look at some of what's going on in your region. In particular, it can give you an idea uh, looking forward as to what positions businesses may be trying to fill in your region. So we found it useful. Some people in the workforce system, there are different vendors that offer this data and many people in the workforce system have access to it. We have some basic help wanted online data that we put on the uh, labor market career information website number of postings by different geographies. Uh, we also have on the TWC website, unemployment claims. We have an unemployment claims dashboard from the TWC homepage that you can take a look at. The key with unemployment, with our unemployment claims dashboard is it only includes people that have applied for unemployment insurance benefits. There are people who are considered unemployed for statistical purposes who have not claimed unemployment insurance either because they chose not to, or for one reason or another, they might be ineligible. 
So just remember you're looking at a subset of the unemployed. Also remember that the data that we post on our dashboard for a variety of technical reasons includes only the regular unemployment insurance program. Several of these uh, laws that have been passed by Congress have created uh, special or temporary benefits programs that various types of workers have been able to avail themselves of, and those would not be included in the dashboard. So just be aware of what you're looking at if you decide to use the data. Now, some advantages of the claims data we put on the website is very quick release. We got it weekly. It comes up very quickly after the data becomes available because it's people who have applied for benefits. So we know who they are. Um, and you get very detailed geography. The limitations of this data set, however, is that it is a sub are that it is a subset of the unemployed, as I mentioned earlier, and the, the issue of the expanded benefits programs not being included in the data. So it can give you a window as to what might be going on in your area. You just need to remember what it is you're looking at so that you know how to correctly interpret it. Here's a quick picture or kind of a uh, picture that we took of the um, dashboard and also the URL of the dashboard. Um, there are some programs we have that provide very useful data to the workforce system, but don't really tell us a whole lot about what COVID has done in our economy. Uh, the first one of those is occupational employment statistics. It's a very useful data set because it tells you wages by occupation, but those wages are collected over a three-year period. Uh, right now, we've released 2019 at TWC. We're getting ready to release 2020 in the next few months ahead. But even the 2020 data only includes one of the six semi-annual panels that occurred after COVID. So you're dealing with three years worth of data put into our estimates. And so it's not going to tell you a whole lot about the effect of COVID on the economy. And our long-term projections, you know, the, they did not adjust for COVID and long-term projections uh, in large part because they're long-term. Uh, the, our current projection cycle is 2018 to 2028. We certainly hope that the COVID-related economic disruption is a thing of the past by 2028. Uh, so it, it would be very hard to make a long-term projection based on this kind of event, uh, particularly when that information is put together. So those two data sets are very useful in helping us understand the economy, but they're less useful in telling us what the impact of COVID has been on our regional economies. Uh, so that gives you a little bit of an overview of some of the data sets that you saw from Nancy's portion of the presentation where we were presenting data to help you understand where we are as an economy, where our recovery is, and kind of how you can look at your local economy to um, provide guidance to people in your area. Because if there's one thing I hope we came across in this presentation, it's the, the different regions of Texas and the different industries in Texas are exactly that, they're different, they're diverse. And so you have to really understand your local area and your local business climate to really be in a position to give the right advice to the people you work with. Now I'm gonna talk about uh, some of the tools we have where you can find a lot of this data uh, to help you uh, perhaps produce some information like the ones you saw earlier in this presentation. Uh, one thing I would really commend to you is that on TexasLMI.com, in that second column, we have ready-made economic profiles for workforce development areas and metropolitan statistical areas. Uh, those take a lot of the data that is commonly requested, and they put it all in one nice screen for you to look at. You can export them to Excel. It's all there. And uh, we think that'd be a very good place to start. So this is what they look like. We put a map of the region up there so you know you're looking at the right region. And you can see in that upper right-hand column uh, of the presentation of the uh, website, uh, you can use, there is an export to Excel button. Uh, if you click that, it'll export all the data in the profile to an Excel file so that you can work with the data on your own. So I hope that uh, that would be a very good place for you to start. Um, the other place, other feature of TexasLMI.com that sometimes gets overlooked that we would like to commend to you, 
would be our popular downloads features. Uh, you can get to it either at the bottom of the middle column or you can get to it on the top menu at the top of the, the homepage. Uh, either one will get you to the popular downloads part of TexasLMI.com. And we have put some commonly requested spreadsheets on there that will give you a very quick snapshot of what's going on. And we've made a lot of them regional for you. So instead of having to do searching and querying the data and putting something together yourself, we've done some of that work for you. So take advantage of our work. Um, right now, once you click on um, popular downloads, it gives you get, you get taken to another screen that we have on the slide that uh, has tabs that ask you to pick which data source you're looking at. In this case, the Laos tab is selected. And we have organized our Laos spreadsheets, and also, by the way, we do this in the CES program too, by the name of the largest city in the WDA or, or the largest or the metro area that is the largest metro area in the WDA. So look for a city name and you'll usually find uh, the spreadsheet for your workforce development area. In this case, just as an example, I've selected Waco, uh, which will give you all of the Laos data we have for the heart of Texas region. And then when you click download, a spreadsheet comes up and uh, on my next slide has a sample of what that spreadsheet looks like. Uh, and what you see is that we have the state unemployment numbers. So just to provide a comparison, then the metropolitan statistical area, in this case, Waco, then the WDA numbers, then we have every county in the workforce development area, followed by any cities that we have data for. And it gives you the current month's data both the labor force, employment, unemployment, and the unemployment rate. It gives you the prior month and it gives you a year ago. Uh, I just put an October spreadsheet in here as a sample. Obviously the most current data we've released is February. And by the time you view this, it'll be March. Um, so that is our quick reference Laos spreadsheet. We have something similar in the CES program. Every industry in the metropolitan statistical area that you select from our popular downloads feature will come up. Uh, obviously, because of CES data, it'll be by metro area. And again, we have the employment counts for the current month, the prior month, and a year ago, along with both the number change and the percent change for monthly and yearly, which can be a very useful way of looking at your economy because as I mentioned, the impact of COVID has been very uneven by industry. So you just take the spreadsheet and look at which ones uh, look at those over the year numbers and see what's happened. Um, and that is one way to take a look at where things are with your economy. Um, we also have some popular download data called staffing patterns. It's, it's known as the IO matrix. We also put it on a website called AutoCoder. It describes the relationship between industry and occupation. So you can select an industry and say, what are the most common occupations that industry hires? Because it may be that you have a lot of people you're working with who have been laid off in an industry that's been really hard hit by COVID, but their skill set or their experience could also be transferred or it's also commonly used in an industry that's doing a little better, that's recovering a little faster. And so sometimes those staffing pattern data can help you see which occupations are hired in industries that might be doing a little bit better and can help you point people in the right direction. Um, so staffing patterns may be a useful source uh, when all you have is industry data because our occupational data has several years of data that help us understand what's going on with occupations. We have a quick reference website called texaswages.com. Um, it doesn't have as many uh, levels of detail as texaslmi.com does, but if you're looking to see uh, occupational wages or occupational projections quickly, for all the regions of the state, this is a, a way you can find it and we'll commend uh, texaswages.com to you. Also, as I mentioned earlier, we have some very basic help wanted online data on the TWC website. There are people in the workforce system who have a more robust data source that's available to them. Um, you know, So I would check for those of you who are at the workforce boards to see what help wanted online data you have available. But we have some basic help wanted online data that we have a contract that allows us to post to our site for the general public to view. And so that's why I put it in my presentation. 
Uh, sample output, it basically gives you total number of postings by region for a time period that you select. Um, and like I said, there's a lot more levels of detail that are available from some help wanted online vendors. So please, people in the workforce system, definitely check out what products you have access to. Um, and then I just put, because I wanted to make sure it well, the print was large enough for everybody to read, that our main sources were from the Bureau of Labor Statistics Current Employment Statistics Program, our local area unemployment statistics program, and also our help one on online work cited. And as I mentioned before, we have a whole team of economists at Labor Market and Career Information. I know we have covered a lot of information in this presentation. Both Nancy and I are going to be around for questions. So please feel free to ask questions. We'll try to answer them today, but we're also here for you offline. So go to lmci at twc.state.tx.us, email us. That mailbox is checked by all of our economists. You can also contact Nancy or I directly. We're here to help you. I hope this has been a uh, informative look at the economy for all of you. I know that we are working in very challenging times in the Texas workforce system because of the current economic situation we're in. And we at LMCI really want to help you provide the best advice possible to the people that you work with in your community. So please help us do our jobs by contacting us and letting us help you. And we really appreciate your interest in our programs and your interest in LMCI. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, William and Nancy. We truly appreciate you and all that you shared with us. We also want to thank our attendees for being here. Um, do we have any questions to pose to Nancy and William before we end our session? We have about 13 minutes left. Hi, I know I threw, we threw a lot of information at you in 40 minutes, so uh, uh, we're here for questions. I do see a couple of questions. Um, and I'm not sure if these were answered during the presentation. Uh, the first one, uh, will there be a PowerPoint available for this session? Do we have anybody that can answer that? It's being pre-recorded, so, uh, and will be posted on the web after the forum. Okay. And the next question I have, where can I find A, part-time estimates, and B, temporary work estimates, ideally historical data, as well going back to 2010 through the most recent? And okay. It goes on to say, sorry, it goes on to say, appreciate your response as this type of contingent type of employment is a critical aspect of labor market and labor attachment trends? Most of our data does not distinguish between full-time and part-time. And let me tell you why. Um, you've got to define part-time. Uh, and that can get really tricky, um, depending on the work context and how people are paid. You know, there are some people that are paid on a commission basis. There are people that are paid on an hourly basis. There are people that are paid for a set period of time. You know, the, the, work, the world of work kind of comes in all shapes and sizes. And so most of our data sets do not differentiate between part-time and full-time. They really look at are you employed or are you not employed? And usually when we're looking at who's employed, you know, that, that comes from two sources. Obviously it comes from survey responses, uh, especially in our Laos program. And it also comes from tax records. So if the employer is required to pay unemployment taxes on them, they are considered employed. So the world of labor market statistics does not say a whole lot about um, part-time versus full-time. Uh, there are probably some other da government data sources out there uh, that may look at that, but some of that data may be national in scope rather than you know, region specific. Uh, would be would be my guess. So I would I would look at uh, see what the Census Bureau and also the Bureau of Labor Statistics has on a national level. But in terms of our Texas data sets, they tend to look at it. You're either employed or you're not employed because the other trick you get in measuring employment is that people can have more than one job. 
uh, which can also be tricky to measure, you know, like I said, what is full time? I hope that at least gives you some information that's responsive to your question. Okay, thank you for that answer. The next question I have regarding the unemployment claims dashboard data source, has the increase in fraudulent UI claims, unemployment claims had an impact on the accuracy of this report's data? I may have to look into that and get back to you on that um, in terms of how um, how that data is reported. Um, you know, a lot of that data comes from a system called Promise, which is one of the inputs into our Laos data sets. And they have tried to keep the methodology the same as it was pre-COVID because Laos is a time series. So you want your data, for example, from 2016 to be comparable to the data we're producing in 2021. But in terms of the specific question you ask about fraud, I will need to check with our Laos team. You can email us offline and I'd be happy to track that down and see if I get some answers for you on that. Okay. And it looks like the last question I have, when you mentioned to consider subsector level changes, what does this mean? Would you provide an example? Sure, I can provide an example. Um, basically, we have a hierarchy of industries. Our industry codes are called NAICS codes. Um, and they, they, they actually have digits behind them, and the more digits you have in the NAICS code, the more detailed it is. You, know, you can think of those, uh, those uh, dolls where you have the smaller doll inside the bigger doll. Um, that's kind of how our industries can be. You, you can have some industry classifications that are subsets of others. So, for example, business and professional services is a broad industry group that is doing very well um, relatively speaking, in a lot of areas um, as a result of COVID. And then there are some industries that are under that, such as uh, professional scientific and technical services that are uh, have even stronger performance in some areas. So when you look at our CES spreadsheet, like if you go to popular downloads and download the spreadsheet, we actually put dots beside each of our series in CES and the number of dots tells you how detailed the industry is. So you might have one with two dots, and below it you'll have several with three dots. Those are often subsets of the two-dot industry above it. Um, another example might be we have healthcare and social assistance. Um, and one of the um, and and the social assistance part of healthcare can sometimes move differently from the other parts of healthcare. So under healthcare and social assistance, you would have ambulatory healthcare, which is like doctor's offices and dentist offices and things like that. You'd have hospitals. You'd also have that social assistance portion, which includes a lot of childcare. And sometimes the sector as a whole may have one average, but if you look at what's below it, each of those, those subcategories can move differently from the overall average. And so what we're saying is that if you see a part of your economy that has some really interesting numbers, you might look at the components, depending on the level of detail you have, to see what might be driving the number you're seeing. Another one we look at closely is trade, transportation, utilities. And right under that, you have retail trade, you have wholesale trade, and you have transportation, warehousing, utilities. And they all contribute, all those subgroups contribute to the larger group. I hope that is a good explanation of, of the concept that we're describing here. Uh, it just gives you a, a different level of detail into what's going on in the economy so you can understand the, the, the broader numbers, such as total non-farm, that we produce. Are there any other questions? It looks like as far as questions, I do see another one. Do the CLF numbers include self-employed individuals, individuals that work on cash only basis?
Nancy, um, let me see if I'm going to double check that um, because of how the last numbers are created. Nancy, do you know anything about that? I, I think it would be best to counsel with our last team for that, just to make sure that we give an accurate answer. Um, but that's a, that's a great question, and we definitely want to give you the right answer to that. Yeah, and, and, I, and we're, we're, we're going to check to make sure we get the correct technical answer. Uh, some of our data programs are based on people who are employed and that, that the, the whole self-employed and independent contractor world, it depends on the specifics of the data program you're looking at. So I want to make sure any information I give at this form is accurate. That's why we're going to double check that. And like I said, if a person can email us that question, I want to send that to our Laos team to make sure anything we say is 100% correct. Okay, and last question I have, is there data on temporary work employment? Based on our state, well, first, someone who is employed temporarily will show up as employed in some of our data sets if, if, if they have to pay unemployment taxes on that person. So like in QCW, if you pay unemployment taxes on them, that person will be recorded in that month's employment in the QCW program. Um, but in terms of separating out temporary, most of the data sets that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis at LMCI just look at employed or not. Um, like, I said, like I mentioned earlier, there may be some national data sets that either Bureau of Labor Statistics or Census that might look at some of those questions. Um, but I will admit that particularly with very detailed geography, there is somewhat limited data that is available on those questions. Um, if you want to check with us offline, I can see what I can find out about that. But I can tell you that most of the data sets, the, the main data sets we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis at LMCI, it's basically you're employed or you're not employed. In the, reference period. Thank you, William and Nancy, for your wonderful presentation. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, are there any other questions? No, we're, I'm not seeing any other questions. Michelle, are there any other questions? No, that was the last one that I saw. Well, I would like to thank everybody for attending and thank you for your interest. And as we said earlier in the presentation, uh, we are here and happy to help you uh, answer any questions about your labor market or economic data needs. Thank you so much, William and Nancy, for your wonderful presentation on the labor market data in a changing economic economy climate. We also want to thank our session attendees. We appreciate your time and attention to this extremely valuable information. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you for attending the 2021 Texas Workforce Commission Virtual Forum. We trust the information was beneficial and will help us better serve the people of Texas. We will see you next year.